Good morning students. Today we will see the problems based on st state space representation of discrete time system. So this state space representation of discrete time system can be done in four ways. That is controllable canonical form, observable canonical form, diagonal canonical form and Jordan canonical form. So th these are the four different models of problems we have to solve in the state space representation of discrete time system. So today we will see the problem based on diagonal canonical form. So this is a given transfer function g of s equals to 3s plus 1 by s cube plus 6s square plus 11s plus 6. So for this given transfer function we have to find out the diagonal canonical form. So what is the first step? So first step you have to apply the partial fraction. So this expression can be written as 3s plus 1 by s cube plus 6s square plus 11s plus 6 can be written as 3s plus 1 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 into s plus 3. If you multiply all these three terms, you will get the resultant as this denominator itself. So by applying partial fraction, we can write that a by s plus 1 plus b by s plus 2 plus c by s plus 3. So after applying partial fractions, you need to find out the values of a, b and c. Already you have done many problems by applying some partial fractions. After doing partial fractions, you got the values as a equals to minus 1, b equals to 5, c equals to minus 4. I am here directly showing you the values after the partial fraction has been done. Now let us substitute all this a, b, c in the above equation. So g equals to a value what did we get? Minus 1. So minus 1 by s plus 1. b value is 5. So 5 by s plus 2. And c value is minus 4. That is minus 4 by s plus 3. After substituting in the above equation, now we have to find out the resultant state model expression. So this is the equation for diagonal form that is x1 of k plus 1. So this one can be represented as x1 dot also that is not a big problem. So x2 of k plus 1, x3 of k plus 1. Why did we take x1, x2, x3 because here the order is 3. So we got x1, x2 and x3. This can be represented as x1 dot, x2 dot as well as x3 dot. So now how to represent this equation in matrix form. So let us see. So whatever the denominator is there here. So s plus 1 is one denominator, s plus 2 is one denominator and s plus 3 is denominator. All these are called as poles. So s plus 1 is one pole, s plus 2 is one pole, s plus 3 is one pole. So what you will get s equals to minus 1 is one pole, s equals to minus 2 is one pole, s equals to minus 3 is one pole. So the denominator denotes poles and the numerator denotes zeros. So s equals to minus 1, s equals to minus 2, s equals to minus 3. All these are called as poles. And you can see that all poles are different. There is no repeated pole. So whenever we are doing this problem, we will come across repeated poles also. If repeated poles comes, then the procedure will be different. So in this problem, we do not have any sort of repeated poles. We have got different distinct poles. That is s equals to minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. All are different. We are not having any repeated poles. So this how we have to represent in the matrix form. So let us represent this one as matrix A. What do we get? S equals to minus 1 is 1 pole. S equals to minus 2 is 1 pole. S equals to minus 3. As the name indicates it is a diagonal form. This all poles has to be represented in diagonal form. That is S equals to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Since there is no pole repeated. If no pole is repeated you can write above and below as 0. The rest of the elements as 0. When no pole is repeated into x1, x2, x3 plus b matrix. So b matrix will always be a unit matrix that is 1, 1, 1 because whenever poles are not repeated just you can represent b matrix as 1, 1, 1. In order to get this one we have to do by inspection method. Again the problem becomes very big and complex. So in order to avoid that just remember that whenever poles are not repeated just represent the matrix by a unit matrix that is 1, 1, 1. And coming to the output y equals to whatever the zeros are there in the numerator that is minus 1, 5, 4. Just represent same thing minus 1, 5, 4. This will become C matrix. This is A, this is B and this is C. So let us denote that one A, B and C. So just a C matrix should be represented with the zeros that is minus 1, 5, minus 4. Minus 1, minus uh, 5, minus 4. X1, X2 and here X3 of K. So this is how to form a diagonal canonical form for a given transfer function when poles are not repeated. Thank you.